make me wanna eat you Every time I see you, it's like the first time I meet you Fragrance like a flower, subtle and sweet too Seductive and whatever, it might as well be see-through Yo, what's going on you guys? My name is Owen and welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are all having a great day so far. So for today's video, it's gonna be a spring summer essentials video for 2023. So how this is gonna work is I'm gonna basically go from bottom up to what my current rotation is, what I'm gonna be wearing for the spring summer season, as well as a couple of really cool announcements for you guys. So yeah, I say we just get right into it. It's been a minute since I've made an essentials video and they always do really well and you guys seem to really enjoy them. Um, I think this was my last essentials video, so a lot's changed since then, um, especially in the hair department. So yeah, let's just get right into the first item. For the first category in the essentials, I say we run over my footwear. To be honest, there's really only one pair of shoes that I wear above all else, um, but I did want to show my other rotation that I wear, not nearly as frequently, but still good to show some variety. So the first pair of shoes, which is also the most worn item in my wardrobe right now, just so happens to be the Somar Grunt Combat Boots that are finally releasing this month. Here's the release info right here. It comes out on April 22nd, which is the Saturday at 9 a.m. PST and 12 p.m. EST, so that's noon Eastern time. These will be available globally online, and there will also be a pickup option, so you can come into the Somar office and try on the pair, pick it up for yourself, and get to hold it in person. And these are releasing for $300. I know I've shown these off on the channel before, and I've teased them for a while, so let's run over some quick details. So this is my personal pair, and it's actually a sample pair. There's only a couple of small changes that have happened, but as you can see, the leather has perfectly molded to my foot. The model of the shoe is a combination of a few of my favorite boot silhouettes that I've ever owned and that I've ever experienced. Um, so the US Army combat boots, some para boots, as well as some motorcycle boots. This is cow leather and it's Klondike bonded as well. So that means it's two separate pieces of leather that are then bonded together to create one extra thick piece of leather. So that's how you're able to get the smooth cow exterior and then the rough suede interior that you can see on all of the hits of the panels. It has a double cap toe, which is one of my favorite details. It has a double thick sole, so it adds a lot of height. It has a Goodyear welt, has a recycled cork insole. One of my favorite details about the shoe is the tongue construction because it has a trifold tongue, or at least that's what I'm calling it. Basically how it works is instead of the tongue being loose at the top where it just can sort of like float around and it's not really attached to the shoe except for at the base. This is actually attached all the way to the top of the lacing system and you can see how the tongue folds around itself. So when you do open up the shoe, it has a much wider opening and then your foot can slide in as you go to lace the shoe. It has this perfect sort of like cup around your leg. So there's no really falling out of the shoe. You don't even have to lace the shoes, to be honest. Sometimes I'll just tuck the laces in between these little folds and the shoe doesn't come off. Um, so yeah, that's just one of my favorite details. It comes with two pairs of laces. Um, so as you can see right here, I have the extra long rope laces on. These actually come waxed. Uh, this is just not a wax pair. And then this is a brand new pair, which comes with the rough leather laces. Um, it also comes with the wax laces that are a little bit longer. But yeah, this is what the brand new pair looks like. Looks crazy, especially side by side. You can see how well the leather has broken in and molded to my foot. Um, yeah, it's just a beautiful boot and I'm so, so proud of this thing. And I'm excited for you guys to get your hands on it. That's what the sole looks like. Um, I've been working on this project for about two years now. So many samples. I feel like a lot of people know me as a boot guy. And so I was really adamant on getting it right the first time around for my first ever footwear release. And I'm just extremely proud of how this project just came out. And yeah, that's kind of it for that. Let me go ahead and put this shoe back on. Hopping over to a pair of sneakers that I think are gonna kind of blow up this year. I wanna show you guys my Hoka's. I believe I've shown these off on the channel before, but these are a collaboration that came out maybe like four years ago with Engineered Garments. So these are the Engineered Garments Hoka Tor Ultra Lows, I believe. 
obviously in the black colorway. I know there's a tan, and there might be a green as well. Hoka's might be the most comfortable sneaker brand that I've tried on at least. It's a really chunky shoe. Um, lots of like suede hits all over it. It's got like a lot of bounce to it and yeah, it's just a massive shoe and I think it looks great with a lot of like baggy trousers as well. I know there's a bunch of other colorways out there and I'm sure Hoka has some non-collaboration models that are all black and look pretty similar to these. Um, so if you want to avoid like the little collaboration premium tax, then I would just go that route. Um, because your best shot at finding a pair of these nowadays is probably secondhand. I assume most of them are used by now. But yeah, huge fan of these. Um, they're going to be getting a lot more wear and tear this summer. And yeah, let's move on to the next pair of shoes. Hopping over to another pair of boots. Um, these are my go-to cowboy boots. These are some vintage ostrich leather cowboy boots that I got secondhand, obviously. I think I got these off of Etsy or eBay for a fantastic price. They have this really nice pointed uh, toe, and they also have a straight heel on the back. For me, at least personally, I don't like a Cuban heel on a cowboy boot. I think it just doesn't look good on me. So yeah, I love that straight heel on the back, and then the ostrich leather um, has just like tons of polka dots all over it and then it has a pretty standard cowboy boot upper. I really like wearing these with some baggy trousers. I think the contrast of like a really slim pointed shoe and then a really big pair of baggy trousers just looks really nice. So yeah, those are my go-to cowboy boots. My beater sneakers are gonna be these right here. These are just some blacked out slip-on Vans. Um, yeah, I don't know, there's not much to say about these. They're just so easy to wear. I love just like crushing that back heel, just wearing them around the house, taking up the trash, going on like a short walk around the park, whatever it is. Um, yeah, these just get absolutely trashed and I think they'll look great in a couple of years when they're completely beaten into the ground. Honestly, these are kind of hard to style, which is why I think like just going super low effort is the best way to make these look nice. So yeah. Just wanted to show off my little beater slip-on vans. They're really comfortable and they also have that cushiony leather bit on the inside right there. And then my more dressy pair of shoes are gonna be these guys right here. I haven't worn these too much, but I will be pretty soon. Um, these are a pair of Raph Simmons Autumn Winter 2008-2009 Double Sole Derbies. These are a ridiculous looking pair of derbies. Um, they're so cool. I love how massive they are. This is, I believe, a size 42. Yeah, size 42, um, but they're just absolutely massive. Um, they have that double thick sole, some beautiful leather. I think these actually would look great with uh, the shorts that I'm wearing right now, or it's like a very baggy pair of trousers. Um, I'm gonna be saying that a lot. I think most things look good with baggy trousers. Kind of rare and kind of a sought after item. It's a collector's piece from Raph. You guys know I'm a big Raph head, so. Um, I've actually had my eye on these for a while. There's a few different versions and models of this shoe. There's like a high top version, and there's a few other leather options. I think there's a crocodile as well. These are super cool, and uh, I'll be doing some styling for sure with these in the near future. Um, I've kind of kept these on ice for a little bit, but I'm starting to break them out more and more. So yeah, those are the raft derbies. Moving on to the rack behind me, as you can see, we've got bottoms, tees, hoodies, jackets. Um, so yeah, let's just keep rolling through. Start with some bottoms. These I have not shown off on the channel yet, but if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen these. These are a pair of Acne Studios double knee, huge, huge oversized canvas pants. I believe these came out a couple seasons ago because I got them on a ridiculously good deal off of like end, I think. Pretty simple silhouette but the canvas is so ridiculously heavy and it took so long to break these in. I've worn these a good amount already and they're already getting some heel bite, which looks nice. You can see the double knee right there. It's a pretty simple silhouette. Um, just got some diagonal pockets. That's what the backside looks like. It's got the little acne face patch and then some flat Velcro pockets. These are also way too big for me. I think they're like a medium. If I had to guess, these are probably like a 32 waist, so they're kind of massive on me. So I have to wear them with a belt. Um, the inseam is crazy long, which is how I'm getting that heel bite. But yeah, I'm a huge fan of these. I think the construction quality is super nice. Um, I just wish the canvas didn't take so much breaking in. Moving on to another Somar item that I've been wear testing a bunch. These are the G74s in 
the all black colorway. These are gonna be coming out a little bit after the boots, probably like two drops after the boots, but I've just been wear testing them a ton. It's the same silhouette as the G73, except they're in this beautiful cotton material instead of the denim. And it also has a button fly instead of the zipper fly like the G73s, you can see a nice little Somar buttons right there. These will be coming out in a off-white as well, which is really cool. Um, yeah, it's got the little back zipper, the tassel right there. These are also starting to get some beautiful heel bite, um, which is just something I really like about wearing longer pants. I think it looks great just puddling over shoes. It's like a boot cut, flared silhouette. Doing one of my best fitting pairs of pants and I'm stoked to get those out for you guys. Next up for jeans, I've worn these a ton. This might be my most worn pair of jeans right now. These are the Acne Studios 2021 M jeans. When I showed these off on the channel, I had a bigger size. I think I had the 32 by 34, but I did a size swap. I secured a 30 by 32, which fits me way, way better. These are basically just a really wide cut pair of sort of like a dark gray, light black pair of jeans. Um, with tons of like pink stitching detail all over it. You can see some of the pink thread on the back and then it also has a pink selvage on the inside, which is just like a nice little detail. It has the little black Acne Studios patch. These fit me amazing. I wear them maybe like four days out of the week. The denim is very, very soft, so they're pretty easy to throw on. This pair of jeans I also haven't shown off on the channel yet. These are a pair of Helmet Lang, I think it's Spring Summer 99, coated black jeans. Um, these are coated in wax, and I've had these tailored to a very specific fit. Um, sort of like a slim straight instead of the more like wide cut fit that they were before. I've also had the waist taken in a little bit because I didn't want to get rid of these. They're just really massive on me. Um, and I love the wax coating texture. Hopefully the camera is doing it justice, but it looks beautiful. Um, and I've also released the hem as well. These were worn in some of the uh, Somar photography for the grunt boots. So if you see the black jeans, it's probably these. The texture is just amazing on these. And I think they'll look really good after like another 100 wears when some of the wax is like starting to fall off. My go-to like straight black jeans that I've been wearing recently. This wouldn't be a spring summer video without showing off a pair of shorts. I'm not much of a shorts guy though, but I did find one pair of shorts I've been wearing a lot recently. Um, that felt like showing off to you guys. So let me go ahead and pan the camera down since I'm wearing them right now. These are the Dickies 13 inch work shorts. It's very similar to the 874, but cut off below the knee. Um, I kind of like the look of the 13 inch. I was debating going for a, a uh, shorter inseam, but I love how these look. It's mainly with shorts. I've just gone with like the standard like Rick Owens boxing shorts, but I think these actually fit really nice and I love the functionality of them as well. It's got these standard Dickie style belt loops, two pockets up front. Um, I've thrown some pins on right there. It's got one little back pocket right here, which is also different from the 874. It's got two back pockets and does have a pleated front, which I'm a huge fan of. It's sort of like a smarter pair of shorts, something that I'm still not entirely used to, but I'm a huge fan of it. Gonna be wearing it a ton this summer. And plus they're super cheap as well. You can probably find a used pair. Um, I just got mine new because I want to break them in myself. So yeah, that's a pair of shorts. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know I'm gonna show this thing off. This is the vintage Cradle of Filth t-shirt that I wear inside out pretty much every single day. This thing is completely falling apart. When I got this thing, it was pitch black and it's just worn in so nicely over the years. You can see some of the broken stitching and how the fabric is starting to rip around the shoulders. Um, it's got some it's got some really nice holes up front as well. And yeah, this is just like my go-to t-shirt. I wish it was a little bit darker because now it's sort of like a gray. I pretty much wear it inside out because the graphic is very loud. So just gotta show that real quick. Something I've been using to layer a lot when it's a little bit chillier is this long sleeve right here. This is from my friend Kaido's brand, which is Fora Atelier. This is called the Burnout Long Sleeve, which basically has a sublimated print all over it of some tire marks that has like little logo hits with the Atelier logo. It's got a little four x four graphic right there as well. 
This thing layered underneath the t-shirt looks so good. I love that little pop of a graphic. For reference, this is a medium. I recommend just going true to size, and I think he still has some on his website. Very unique for my wardrobe, but it kind of fits right in. Moving on to some hoodies, I've got two hoodies to show you guys. First up, we have a beauty, something that you guys have been waiting for for a while. It's gonna be coming out soon. Probably the final sample that we're gonna do for the pre-production version. Um, very small changes are gonna happen from this one to the next one, but this is the Blight hoodie named by you guys. A few months ago, I asked you guys to help name this thing, and whoever had a name that I chose is just gonna get a free one. So you know who you are. Whoever came up with Blight hoodie, you're gonna be getting a free one of these. It's a raglan sleeve hoodie with some oil staining and tons of distressing all over it has a little quarter zip moment. This is gonna to change to a Somar zipper, and it's also gonna get some embroidery on this end part of the hood, um, and the seam's gonna cut short a little bit. This thing fits incredible. I love how this fits on me, and I love the wash on it as well. Um, it's sort of like this in between, like brown and gray. Another thing that's gonna change from this sample to the next is that the oil staining is gonna be a little bit less defined around the edges and it's gonna be a little bit lighter in color. And I love having this quarter zip. I think it makes like the hood silhouette look so nice. French terry as well, super thick French terry. Let's move on to the next hoodie. Very similar vein, you guys know I love my distressed hoodies. This is a vintage hoodie that was distressed and then repaired by my good friend, Mr. Alex, the goat, um, over at Two Fold. He's repaired it entirely with white thread, which is why it has this beautiful, sort of like sashiko stitch method going on. And then it does have a little O right there, which is one of my favorite details. Um, this thing fits incredible. I wish the hood was a tiny bit bigger, but that's kind of like the price you pay with uh, vintage hoodies. A lot of them are just gonna have a tiny hood for some reason. This thing is just torn and tattered. Looks stunning, it's so unique and one of a kind. Since it's a black hoodie, it's incredibly easy to throw on. The second to last category for the essentials are gonna be my jackets. I tried to keep the jacket section pretty slim, but it has been cold in LA recently. And for when it gets chilly in the nights, this is usually what I'm gonna throw on. And yeah, since it's been raining a ton in LA, it's actually been flooding in LA. Um, my go-to and pretty much my only rain jacket is actually this one right here, which is a sample Somar jacket. This is called the Starro jacket, which is based off the road in Boston, if you guys know. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because this is just a first sample. But it does have a waterproof, double-layered material, very similar to Gore-Tex without the Gore-Tex license. A super cropped, wide-body silhouette with four pockets up front. It has two waterproof pockets up front and a waterproof front closure. Um, some small changes are gonna happen to those. Regular pockets up front as well um, for some more ease of access. I love like the four pocket closure. I'm a huge fan of the functionality of it. It's got waterproof tape seams all over. It also has a waterproof pocket on the inside. So really coming after Arc'teryx. It has a turtleneck collar up front with the hood, of course. We are gonna be swapping this embroidery and getting rid of this and then also adding the Somar logo embroidered on the hood, which will have a waterproof backing. Has some pull tabs up here, and then also has a toggle on the back. Um, thing just fits incredible. Um, I got so many compliments on it when I was up in Portland. Um, just perfect for that weather. And yeah, I'll probably talk more about this in the future. This is probably gonna be coming out late summer. My go-to leather jacket at the moment has got to be this Vuja Day jacket. This was sent over me by Ken a couple months ago, and I absolutely love this thing. It's such a smart looking jacket, and it fits me amazing. Yeah, the quality of the leather and the quality of the construction, everything is fantastic. I love how cropped it is, and I also love how long the sleeves are. You guys can see how exaggerated of a silhouette that is. It's got two pockets on it which ride very high. Um, and then it's got like a double zipped closure so you can unzip it from the bottom, unzip it from the top. That's what the backside looks like. Um, this is one of my more dressy jackets, I guess. If you wanna see a full breakdown of the collection, go check out one of my previous videos. I'll have that right there. And then another one of my most worn jackets at the moment has got to be this guy. This is my Raph Simmons Autumn Winter 0405 Waves dual zip moto jacket. Um, I've got many different versions of this jacket. It's my favorite silhouette from Raph Simmons. 
Um, but this happens to be my favorite of all of them. Essentially, it's like a turtleneck style bomber. This version has ribbed cuffs and a ribbed um, bottom hem. It has a quarter zip up top, turtleneck style, um, and then the full zip, like the main closure, goes diagonally across the body. And on the zipper, I did add my own little tassel. And this just got two pockets up front. It's sort of like a moleskin style cotton. It's like a vintage cotton. And it's already starting to fade beautifully. A stunning, stunning jacket. And I am just so happy to have it in my collection. And yeah, let's move on to some accessories and then that'll be it for the video. So the first accessory actually is gonna be this belt. You guys have seen me talk about it before. It was probably in my last accessories video. This is the Somar Metal Alloy Decal Belt. Um, you guys can see it's going through the Dickies belt loops right now. I think it's just my everyday. Uh, most of my trousers are too big for me, so I have to belt them up anyways. I love the little hit of the metal logo right there peeking out, um, especially if I'm wearing a more crop tee. Um, just getting like a glimpse of that logo just looks so good. I'm a huge fan of that. And then also for some quick accessories, the hat that I've been wearing a ton recently has been this little guy right here. I've had this for a couple years now, I think. Um, this is the Jacob Hetzer Dark Cap, I want to say it's called. This is in the black colorway. He's done a few different colorways. Um, fits pretty good. I think the fits also changed a lot for each one. At least that's what I've noticed, but this version easily fits the best. I do have the light green one, and it doesn't fit nearly as good as this one. I'm not sure exactly what's changed. That's my go-to hat at the moment. And then for some sunglasses, I have two pairs of sunglasses to show you guys. They're not entirely new or anything, but first up are these Oakleys that I had custom made. I'm not sure exactly which model it is, but you can go on the Oakley website and do a little customizing for yourself. Without the hat, that's what they look like on. I think they look pretty good. They fit my head shape. I actually really like that sporty look that they offer. Um, sometimes I'll wear them like that if I don't feel like wearing them on my head. And because they're curved, they actually sit way better that way. Um, so, yeah. Those are the Oakleys. And then for another pair of sunglasses, I have these right here. These are the Jacob Hetzer um, like steel sunglasses, titanium sunglasses. I'm not sure what they're called. These also released, I think, a couple years ago. They have sort of like a green lens. That's what they look like on. Um, more of like a smarter silhouette compared to the Oakleys. Sunny outside and I want to go for a less sporty look. This is usually what I'll wear. And yeah, that is going to conclude the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Once again, to do a quick recap, the Grunt Boots are going to be coming out April 22nd, 9 a.m. PST, 12 p.m. EST globally. They will be available online, everywhere. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, you should be able to get a pair shipped to you. Um, the retail is gonna be $300. And yeah, I'm just super happy with how this project has come out. And I'm really excited to see you guys break these in. I just really set a goal for myself to try to create a pair of shoes that I love and wanna wear every day. And I'm happy to say that I did it. And you guys get to own a pair as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Take it easy. I'll see you guys next time. Later.